The PS1 had a lot of classics, a lot of games that we all look back at fondly. Every so often you'll pick them back up, blow the dust and cobwebs off them and set about reminding yourself why you love them. Nostalgia can be a funny thing. Sometimes the games we love pale by today's standards, but some stand up tall, no matter how many years later and on how many times you play them. One of these games is medieval. The evil sorcerer known as Zarak has returned as an attempt to take over the kingdom of Galamir with an army of the undead. 100 years earlier, he was forced into hiding after a suffering defeat at the hands of the king's champion, Sir Daniel Fortescue, who then died from his wounds. At least that is what the legend says. In truth, Sir Dan was struck by the first arrow fired and died instantly, the king choosing to use him as a symbol instead. When Zarek reappears, he casts the spell of a Galamir that steals people's souls and raises the dead. He also inadvertently brings Dan back to life as well, who is but a skeleton, missing his jaw and the eye he was shot in. So Dan is given a second chance to right the wrongs of the past, defeat Zarek and take his rightful place in the Hall of Heroes. Medieval is an adventure game where you take in the role of Sir Dan. The game is spread across a huge amount of levels, ranging from graveyards to possessed villages to pirate ghost ships. Most levels have an objective to complete, sometimes as simple as collecting something and finishing a level or beating a boss. The variety in the levels are one of the game's highlights. They look amazing and have a real gothic style to them. This sleeping village deserves a special mention as it could have been lifted directly from a Tim Burton movie. Most levels are filled with wacky and cleverly designed enemies too. You start off dealing with basic zombies and before you know it you're dealing with armoured knights and demons. So Dan starts off with a basic sword but can utilise a huge number of collectible weapons throughout the game. Clubs, bows, enchanted swords as well as shields that can block damage although for a limited time as they will break. Certain weapons once collected are infinitely superior to others so you might find you stick to them mostly. However, some enemies require to mix it up, such as flying enemies needing to be shot down with arrows, or armoured guards who can only be knocked in the water to kill them. It's clever, and forces you to get used to a range of different weapons. What is also clever is that you may not see more than half of these weapons unless you collect the chalices available per level. In each level there will be a hidden chalice, some very well hidden, which you must fill. You do this by killing an enemy. Their soul adds to a total percentage and once it reaches 100% it's all yours. With the chalice collected at the end of the level, Sir Dan will be transported to the Hall of Heroes where one of the heroes there will gift him with a new weapon or health or sometimes money. Money is spent of one of two gargoyles where you can buy arrows for your bows, re-enchant your magic swords and repair your shields. The other gargoyle will offer advice, conversations, and often insults. The interaction between Dan and them can be funny, as is Dan's interaction with the heroes in the hall. Some are sympathetic to Dan's plight, while others seem as nothing more than a fake hero. It makes up for some funny lines and the voice acting is pretty good. The game's conclusion is satisfying, and should you collect every chalice in the game, you'll be rewarded with an additional ending that sweetens the deal. My one criticism for the game comes with the controls. They are fiddly, especially when trying to run, and some later levels require pretty precise movements on tight ledges. You can very easily lose all your lives very quickly in a short amount of time just by falling off a ledge repeatedly. It would have got a perfect score had it not been for the dodgy running controls. Beyond that, it's hard to find fault with this game. Its gothic colourful world is beautiful to look at and the variety is amazing. The many different enemies force you to think and act differently per level and the puzzles are taxing without bringing frustration. It's a gem of a game. <laughs>